Welcome everybody. So even I thought I was done with these uh, Vera L keys, but but I get a lot of questions about this sleeve on here. So I figured I would buy a new one and we'll put, put this through a couple of uh, tests to see how durable it is. So the first comment I get a lot about these sleeves is that they're too wide to fit into a counterboard hole and they're afraid that this would interfere possibly with that. So if you compare it to another brand, so this is a Viha, same size, five millimeter. It's pretty obvious that yeah, the, the Vera is definitely much wider. I mean, the Viha is pretty much exactly on five, just a little bit under five. And this guy is right around seven and a half millimeters. So yeah, it is about 2.5 millimeters uh, wider in diameter. But the thing you gotta remember, the fasteners of socket cap screws are gonna be much wider than the actual you know, size of the hex in there. And if we measure, this is just a random one. So if we measure this one, it comes out to about 9.4 millimeters in diameter. So there's gonna be no problem with any kind of counterboard hole on that. So the only type of fastener I could think of that might be a problem is something like a, like a set screw like this. This is a 1024 set screw and it requires a 332nd uh, hex drive. So you can see we've got a major thread diameter of over 4.5 millimeters there. So we know the counterboard can't be any smaller than that. And we still got plenty of clearance here for this L key. But it is pretty tight. I mean, we're at about four millimeters on this 332nd. So I can't really see any situation where the counterboard would be too small. It looks like they thought of that when they were designing these. So in terms of what material this is made out of, the catalog only says that it's a thermal plastic. So that could be pretty much anything. That just means it could be deformed with heat. But it's pretty obvious that these are heat shrunk on here. But considering how hard this is, it's probably a PVC based plastic, I'm guessing. But I did get one person tell me that they um, were starting to see these degrade. Uh, over time just from the chemicals they were using it around. So we'll go ahead and put some solvents on here and see how that holds up. So the first thing I think I'll check here is uh, whether or not this is uh, how flammable this stuff is. So it's definitely not catching on fire. I'm putting quite a bit of heat on that. So it definitely didn't catch on fire, but you could see it started to melt. So it's probably like a plenum rated uh, type of uh, PVC, I'm guessing. But it doesn't look like it's shrunk anymore. So it, if it is like a heat shrink type plastic, they did a pretty good job of uh, getting as small as they could without damaging it. So next I'll see, let's see how crush resistant this material is. So let's we'll use these uh, Stavilla pliers wrenches and get a lot of force on there. So yeah, you can definitely leave some dents in there, but it's not like becoming uh, brittle or anything like that. So let's go ahead and use the uh, Cobras and pull a piece off here. All right, so it's definitely not very thick material, as you can see. I was thinking at one time there might be like a step in here um, that they use as kind of a guide to mold it, but it looks like they don't do that. So, all right, so I think now we'll we'll put some solvents on this to see how it reacts. So, we'll start with something extremely mild, some isopropanol alcohol. So if it if it doesn't survive this, then there really is no hope. And I pretty much expect there to be no reaction here. So we'll put it right on the right on the text here in case maybe that ink is reactive with something. So as expected, the uh, alcohol didn't do anything. So we'll go to something a little bit stronger now. This this is acetone. So a lot of plastic will withstand acetone but there are some that will basically dissolve right in it. 
So we'll let that sit there for a little bit and uh, see if it has any reaction. All right, so I've had this uh, soaking for a little bit. I did put a piece of plastic over it to uh, prevent it from evaporating, and I'm not really seeing too much. It looks like it may be attacking some of this ink, this black ink a little bit, but I mean, this stuff is still pretty, it's not very soft, so I think uh, acetone is okay. It's looking like it's not doing any damage. All right, so the next thing I want to try is going to be a little bit unusual, but I'm going to try some uh, soybean-based paint stripper because I at one time I poured this stuff on a piece of styrofoam and it kind of ate through it almost instantly, kind of like acid. So I don't know what would be in there to cause that, but let's see if it has any reaction to this piece of plastic here. So we'll go ahead and let that sit, and we'll come back in a little bit and see if, if it did any damage. All right, we've been letting this soak for a while, and I'm not seeing any any type of damage at all on this. So it definitely survived that, so it probably doesn't have any, any type of styrene in it if uh, this stuff didn't attack it at all. All right, so next thing I'm going to try is some, uh, some oven cleaner. Now, oven cleaner, you can even reuse this stuff to remove plating, uh, brass plating. So, if this doesn't do it, then I, I don't think I have anything stronger than, uh, than oven cleaner to, uh, to use. So, we'll see if this actually does anything. All right, well, the, uh, <coughs> the oven cleaner didn't do nothing on this either. So, an oven cleaner, I think, will actually dissolve uh, bone and it didn't do anything to this so um now there there's there is got to be something that will react with this um i'm thinking that it must be something pretty specialized and pretty toxic that would uh, cause this to degrade um if you guys can think of anything or if you have any experience with these um actually breaking down with certain solvents to use just uh leave a comment and maybe we'll do a follow up on that but what I think might be happening is when people complain about this going away, I think it just may be wear from, uh, you know, debris and sand and stuff as you use it. And it's actually wearing down past the, you know, point where this, uh, this text is embossed. So if we take some uh, sandpaper and just kind of, you know, simulate some wear on here. This is just 800 grit. It's very, very fine. So that didn't really take much at all to uh, start to see that to go away. So that's, that's, that text is a uh, very, very shallow. So I could see if you're using this every day that that would wear away pretty fast. And it's not like I'm making a deep groove here. Like I said, it's only 800 grit. So it's not taking very much at all to uh, get to that depth. So I'm pretty sure when people say that this wears away, um, that's what's actually happening is it's just from, from use. Because really that text is not very deep at all. I mean, it must be a couple thousands of an inch deep. I'm not sure if that's actually stamped on afterwards. It kind of looks like it may be uh, burned on, like heat pressed on. But really they need to they need to make that a little bit deeper. Because as soon as that goes away, other than the color, I don't think there's any way to tell what the size is just by looking at it. You can see there, I mean, I've basically scratched that out entirely. It didn't take very much at all. I think I've had a harder time getting rid of Sharpie marks on wood than I did with that. So the um, that's my guess on what's happening when people complain that this wears away. It's not actually solvents that's doing that. It's probably just wear. So I guess my recommendation to Barrow would be to possibly uh, make that a little bit deeper if they could. Because it definitely is going to wear away if you use these a lot. Uh, no, no doubt about it. So I think what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to probably 
put this outside on the environmental board with all the other tools that I'm doing environmental testing on. And I think we'll try to see if this, uh, this is UV sensitive as well. So that'll be an interesting test to see that, how long that takes to break down. So in case anybody's asking, no, I'm not going to warranty this tool. Um, that's just not something I do. I don't do warranties. And of course, what I did here is probably not allowed under their warranty. I do this so you guys don't have to do it. And hopefully they can make some changes here to make this a, a better tool. All right, guys. Well, it's going to wrap up for this one, and I'll catch you guys next time.